Good evening and thank you everyone for coming. This is a community meeting on special use permit 2022-6, which is called Crown Orchard Farm Worker Housing. I'm Scott Clark. I'm with the Elmore County Community Development Department. And tonight's meeting is an informational meeting for anyone who's interested uh, in, on this special use permit for a farm worker housing facility. I will do a brief introductory presentation about how the county's review process will work for special use permits. Then I will turn it over to the applicants to give a brief description of their project and proposal. And the remainder of the meeting will be for a question and answer session so that anyone who's attending can find out the information that they need. So I'll go ahead and get started on the introductory portion and uh, and we'll move on to the meat of the meeting. So again, this is a special use permit. Purpose of the meeting again is to share information about the proposed project, the development review process and relevant policies and regulations and to solicit public input on the project. So uh, special use permits are reviewed by county staff and the planning commission and approved or denied by the Board of Supervisors. How do we go through that? We start with the comprehensive plan. The county's comprehensive plan is a document that establishes a 20 year vision for land use in the county. So whether it's the development areas and commercial and uh, institutional land or residential land or uh, residential and farm land in the rural areas, the comprehensive plan is the guiding document for the county's land use decisions in all of those areas. For the rural area, which is the portion of the county that this proposal is located in, we have several uh, guiding policies shown here. There's the overarching goal for the different kinds of resources that should be protected in the rural areas and the different objectives that we're trying to meet, including supporting a strong agricultural and forestal economy, protecting and preserving natural resources, protecting historical, archeological, and cultural resources, promoting rural and historic landscapes, recognizing and supporting crossroads communities. And then the reigning few really have to do with the relationship of the rural areas to the citizens, the adjoining development areas, and the University of Virginia. So, this is part of a process involving the zoning ordinance and the county's zoning of the county. While the comprehensive plan sets a policy and says this is our vision for how things should be built or developed or protected, zoning is the specific law that tells everyone what can be done in each area, on each property. Every property has a zoning district that it belongs to, and the sec that section of the ordinance tells what uses are permitted. So that zoning ordinance first lays out what can be done by right. For example, in this rural area zoning ordinance, there are many things that can be done by right, including agriculture, forestry, resource conservation, residences, many other things. In each district, the zoning ordinance also tells you what uses are permitted only by special use permit. So these are permitted, but only with board permission and only under certain conditions that are determined by the board. So how do these applications work? If, you, if a landowner wants to develop use on the special uses list in a zoning district, board approval is required. This is a legislative review. And so the application they submit is read first by county staff and other agencies. So my division of zoning, of, of community development, which is called planning, also zoning, uh, building code department, all of our interacting pieces of the, the county operation, but also the health department, FDOT, the service authority, all these other agencies that comment on these applications. Afterwards, uh, it's commented on by the planning commission who makes a recommendation to the board on the final decision we made. And finally, by the board themselves and they decide uh, which, which use permits are to be approved and what the conditions would be that apply to them. For any special use permit, whether it's farm worker housing in the rural areas or 
uh, on commercial use in the development areas. They're all reviewed to a consistent set of criteria, which you can see here. First, that they're not of substantial detriment to the adjacent properties. Second, that the character of their nearby area is not changed by the use. Third, that the use is in harmony with the by right uses for the surrounding district. So for example, in the rural areas district that we're discussing today, would it be in harmony with agriculture and forestry and all of the other by right uses? And finally, consistency with the comprehensive plan is that use in line with one of those purposes I covered before that are the policies for this part of the county in the comprehensive plan. And we would report on all of those matters to the Planning Commission and to the board for, to help them with their decision process. Right, so how does development happen in El Morro County? when you've got one of these legislative decisions. It's a long detailed process. First on the left part of the timeline is the legislative review itself, which determines whether or not that use can actually happen. In many cases, but probably not this one, the if the use is approved, then the site design has to be reviewed in detail during what's called a site development plan review. That's something that is uh, reviewed entirely by staff in, well, in nearly all cases, unless there's an exception. And then finally, we have building permits and zoning clearances, which are the very detailed matters about uh, getting the building built properly according to uh, the statewide building code. And then construction begins. So we are here in the process very early on. And so again, the, the purpose of meeting today is that at this early point in the process, neighbors and others in the area can be informed about what the proposal actually is and can get an early chance to have some to make some feedback on the process and to find out uh, more about what's going on. And finally, I'll just close out my portion here uh, by saying this is an application that was received in February. Staff, and again, that's planning, zoning, building code. Virginia Department of Transportation and others will be providing comments back to the applicant by April 25th so that they can uh, revise and finalize their application for presentation to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission and board hearings have not been set yet. I typically don't do that until that review process that I mentioned has been finished up. So those will be set at some point after those April 25th comments go out, but we don't have those dates yet. For anyone who's attending, if you're interested in following this project or in finding out more about how we review these uh, kind of proposals, again, my name is Scott Clark. My address is sclark at albemarle.org. Feel free to write to me anytime and I'll be happy to provide more information or to explain how things work. So uh, with all that said, I'm gonna turn this over and unshare my screen and turn this over to the applicants to give you a brief summary of their proposal and then we'll go into the Q&A. Okay, so Ms. Giles, Ms. Can, Chance, if you want to go Can ahead. you hear us? Yep, that works. Okay, well, thank you, Scott. Uh, I'm Huff Giles, this is my wife, Judy, and uh, we appreciate you all um, taking time today to listen to to our proposal. Um, you know, we're a family farm operation here in Albemarle County and they've been doing so for, for a number of years, uh, almost a little over a hundred now. So uh, we're the folks who grow apples and peaches in the county. Um, uh, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, thank you. Um, so I guess what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jump in and just uh, we'll put up a quick, uh, a little real quick presentation and uh, th then we'll go ahead and take anyone's questions. All right, I'm gonna share the screen. I don't know what you do with talking on this. Mm -hmm. There we go. Can you all see that? It's not up there yet, but it looks like it's working on it. So let's just give it a moment. Yeah. Some reason it says it's paused. We're a little new at this, so we <laughs> see. I think it's probably just a connection issue, so let's just give it a second. It says Judy Hello. Childs has started screen sharing, but we can't actually see the image yet. 
Hmm. Let's see. All right, let's try. Let's stop it and try it again. That's always a good plan. How about now? It's not coming up this time. Let's try it. Go back. Another thing we can do if this won't work for you is I can put uh, one or the other of the plan sheets up on the screen and you all can talk and just tell me which one you want me to show. All right. Let us try it one more time because I'm. Yeah. yeah. We're trying. We'll get there. This happens sometimes. Maybe you could help us. We've got a small PowerPoint here. How do we add that in? Um, if you should be seeing a green share a screen button at the bottom of your Zoom window. Right. And if you click that, it should give you a list of your open windows that you can select from to, to share one. Hold on. I lost my screen. Right. All right. They hit the green share screen, correct? Right. And then. Then that should give you a, a box or a window that shows a bunch of different windows that are open on your computer. Right. And whichever one of those is the PowerPoint one, you can just click on that and that should come up. There we go. All right. All right. All right, so just a quick little background about Crown Orchard. Like Huff said, we've been in business since 1912, a little over 100 years. Um, we're currently, three generations are involved in the daily operations. We grow, pack, and ship apples, peaches, nectarines, cherries, grapes, strawberries, and vegetables. Um, we do sell wholesale to local businesses, chain stores, um, and export uh, product internationally. We have two farm markets, Child's Peach Orchard and Carter Mountain Orchard, and a winery tasting room, Chiswell Farm and Winery. Um, we have to have seasonal labor in order to su sustain the farming operation and to keep our culture alive in Albemarle County. Um, we my proposal is to build a dormitory style housing facility on a parcel we own there in Coesville. It's a 32.3 acre parcel, but it is a part of a 52.6 acre track. It'll Ms. Charles, I'm sorry to interrupt, but could you go ahead and click on your slide three there, uh, the proposal slides so people can see it. It's not, it's, uh, we're still uh, seeing the first one. Huh. all right, let's see. I've asked you to give me um, remote access and I can move this slide. You just have to say yes to that request. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay. Um, well, I think I'm going to help. I'm not, I'm not working. All right. Let's see. Can you see it now? I. I see it, but I can't, it's not, it's not giving me option to, um, let me give up, hold on. I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to give up control. Okay. Nicole, can you please try and uh, send them request, request to roll see if it will work for you? You see one come in from Albemarle IT, give them control. Okay. All right. Let's see if it works for her. All right. I just did. Yeah, I do apologize for the interruption, but I just want to make sure everybody can see the. No, I'm there we go. Apologize. Okay. All right. Um, Are we. So 
Do you want us to go ahead and go on now? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so as I said, the proposal is to build a dormitory style housing facility um, on a 52.6 acre tract that we have in Coesville that is zoned to rural agricultural. It'll consist of two buildings as required by the county and will be oriented in such a way to minimize visibility from adjoining landowners and Route 29. All right, the next slide. Can you take it to the next slide for us? There you go. Can you see that? It seems to not be working again. Okay. <laughs> Did it? Yep. There we go. Location. Can you click on that? Can you see it? There we go. Okay. So, yeah. So this is the an aerial view of the location. Um, it's right 29 um, south. Is a uh, already a driveway entrance way to the property, which will go up and propose to build right there where the red area is, and the green would be the driveway and parking. Um, so you can see too, there's tree line and mountain and more trees that surround the parcel. All right. Next slide. Let me see if I can do this time. Can y'all see that one? Yep. Oh, okay. So the living quarters, well, the building we propose will have a living quarters. Um, the building will be about 36 feet by 130. It'll be a dormitory style building with sleeping, bathroom, and laundry areas. The other building will be a kitchen and common area, which will be a 36 by 40 foot building, fully furnished with appliances, tables, and chairs. Uh, we'll have a parking area about 33 by 88 and a yard area uh, with a minimum of 75 foot in front and 50 around the other sides. So this will be, uh, the building will be um, uh, like a vinyl sided building with a shingle roof. Um, we'll show a yep. kind of a sketch of it here in just a minute. There we go. Can you all see that? Yep, that's wrong. Okay. Okay. okay, that's just a rough sketch of what the building will look like. The windows, doors, doors on each end of the buildings. Um, very plain and basic. Um, I know these are hard to see and they're very small, but this is the Inside layout, this would be the, the kitchen and common area with the kitchen common area. Then you got the area between the two buildings. Um, then there will be bedrooms, um, bath, toilet facilities, and more bedrooms. Um, the, Farm work and housing, it will be built to Almore County Building Code. Um, in addition, it also has to meet local, state, and federal specifications and requirements. It will be inspected at least once a year by the Health Department and the Virginia Employment Commission. And it will be built with energy efficient materials with the ability to become solar powered. And that's that's, more? that's pretty much what we have to present at this time. If, if, if um, anybody has any questions, we're certainly open. All righty. Well, thank you both for, for going through the outline of the proposal there. And so uh, anyone who would like to ask a question, either of the applicants about the project or of me about the county process, just hit the raise hand button on your Zoom screen and Carolyn will take you one by one and give you a couple minutes to speak and ask your questions. All right, uh, we have Patricia Hines. Patricia, please state your name and address and um, go ahead with your comments. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. I am Patricia Hines and I live at 5940 Covesville Store Road. 
I am the adjacent property holder on the south side. Um, in reviewing your very nice slides, I now realize that the development is going to be directly, pretty much directly across from my house. And I can see the field from my house because the tree line is not contiguous. There are open areas. And certainly from three of my bedrooms in my living room and front porch, I'll be able to see the development. So I'm concerned about uh, the fact that it's gonna be visible to me, which also makes me wonder about noise and traffic. And I just wanted to raise those concerns and thoughts. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ms. Charles, if you want to go ahead and respond to that. Sure. Well, um, you know, we, the building will be set back. Uh, it won't, you know, the building won't be right on the edge of the property. Um, the way the land lays there, um, the building will be back probably 150 feet or so from, from the property line. And, um, you know, there could be some screening planted there if, if need be to, 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 to give a screen so that the building wouldn't be, um, you know, wouldn't, you wouldn't have to look at it through your bedroom window per, per se. And um, as far as traffic goes, um, there wouldn't be a lot of traffic. So, so this building would be for, for seasonal workers. Um, so there would be times of year um, when it would be, more occupied than others. And um, our workers are transported with vans like church vans. So it wouldn't be a lot of individual cars going in and out because uh, most of our workers um, don't have their own transportation. So we, we, we transport them to wherever they need to go. So the, um, I think the traffic would be minimum compared to what you might um, perceive in your mind. Um, additionally, the workers, I guess you're concerned about noise. Um, they have long days and, you know, we have some locations now that with the labor camps and we've never had an issue or problem um, with noise or complaints of, of a, that type. They're here to work and that's, you know, they don't want to cause any trouble or not be asked to come back. Anybody else that'd like to ask a question, if you're dialing in, use the uh, star nine and that will uh, put you in the queue. Next I have Kelly. Kelly, go ahead and unmute yourself and start speaking. Hi, my name is Kelly. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Sorry about that. Um, my name is Kelly Hardy and I live at 5656 Cove Garden Road. So I'm on the corner of Cove Garden Road and 29. Um, I had a couple of questions. Um, one, what would the max occupancy be of this housing? And then would there be a possibility that plans could change and they would house more, or possibly become a, a two-story or three-story building. And then my second question was, um, you were mentioning current labor camps and in talking with some of my neighbors, they had mentioned that there was already one close by here. And I was curious how many of those folks are currently there, like the numbers. Thank you. Sure, thank you for your question, Kelly. Um, um, at this, you know, at this time, we we don't foresee to add to the number. Um, um, we have applied for uh, housing of up to, I believe it's 50, 50 people. Um, so the building will have um, 10 dormitory style uh, bedrooms uh, with bunk beds. Um, so we're, we're definitely not, uh, we do not have any plans to 
have a bigger building or a taller building. Um, and there is another uh, housing facility in the area that, that we currently lease and that land is for sale. And uh, so that, that property um, wh where we're currently uh, leasing that facility will, will go away in the future when that property is sold. So um, th that's the part of the reason for the need for this building. And I'll just add on um, from the county perspective, typically when uh, a landowner applies for a special use permit and there is uh, an established limit like 50 people or the size of a building or something like that, those factors can be uh, set as requirements in the conditions of the permit so that, uh, for example, if 20 years from now, Crown Orchard needed to add 20 more people to this site, they would basically have to go through the same process all over again that we're doing now with the special use permit in order to amend the permit to see if the addition be, would be approvable. So. Uh, it's not that the uh, approval of a special use permit would be totally open-ended and would allow later expansions. That's not typically the way we, we structure those approvals. All right, next we have Trudy Taylor. Please unmute yourself and you can start talking. Oh, no. Thank you. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Oh, I'll talk to you, it's all right. Introduce yourself. Huff, Sandy Tucker, your next door neighbor. Yes, sir. Across the road from this possible land, that a uh, bird eye view from my picture window. Um, my first question, I guess, is why this tract of land in downtown Coldfield? Why not make it still Crown Orchard? Um, well, to answer your question, um, it's most relevant to where we need workers. And it's a piece of land that currently, um, you know, has good road access and it has got plenty of room for, uh, for you know, for us to, to do this on. Plain. Excuse me? Got plenty of room for you to expand your facility. Um, well, I didn't, well, I didn't really say expand, but it, it's got room to do what needs to be done there. Um, uh, as far as like, um, you know, drain field and, and um, uh, you know, the land, the way the land lays, uh, it kind of goes up the hill and then flattens off. So it's, uh, and we left some, uh, there, there's plenty of cover for this building to be uh, behind um, so that it's not as visible from the road as it could be. I'm uh, not really too concerned about the road. I'm concerned about my view from my picture window. And like I said to start, I got a bird's eye view of that whole track of land, including that other trailer, which is an eyesore to me and everybody else in the community. There's a big pile of uh, trash, stumps and stuff directly in front of my window uh, that's on this particular parcel that you rezoning. And the, the rest of the track or your uh, plants and so forth does not show the solar field, which that kind of went up as a surprise to me and about other people. Uh, it's not shown on here and it not necessarily needs to be, but uh, what we're looking at here is not just the 32 acres that you're asking to rezone, but the whole 50 acre, 50 plus acres that is sort of uncertain as to what's going to happen and what can happen, which brings up another question of what can you do on that property other than build this this migrant worker building. Have you got other options? Um, I'm not sure if I understand your question, but I mean, you know, the, the there is a field there that. Uh, well, let me back up just for a minute. The um, there there is a there is a a brush pile there on the edge of the field. There is no trash there. You said trash and 
you know, there's no trash there. There's a brush, brush pile. pile. I'll stand corrected, a brush pile. Yes, sir. And uh, so, you know, right now the land is in, you know, is in, I think it's in RA, I guess. So it's it's in ag. Um, you know, if if we wanted to plant an orchard there or, you know, the, there's timber there now that the timber's regrowing. Um, um, you know, I guess it could be used for whatever is allowed for RA. Um, I don't have any plans at this moment um, um, other than what we're talking about here today. Um, I'm almost finished, but anyway, I got one other question. Well, maybe two more. The old trailer that suddenly disappeared from this site that you're talking about, where did it go? Um, we had it disposed of. Okay. Um, also on your site plan, uh, somewhere it was mentioned three buildings. You only showed two. The bathroom facility was not shown. It is only two facilities. The, the bathroom facility is in with the living quarters. Okay. Well, it's my understanding that it was going to be a separate building. The, yeah, the separate building is the kitchen and common area. Okay. Um, anybody else in my family have any questions? If not, thank you, Huff, Judy. See yes, you sir. Mailbox. Thank you very thank much. You. And I'd be happy to meet you over there and look at it with you anytime you, you care to. All right, next we have Patricia Hines. Please unmute yourself and start speaking. Thank you for allowing me a second question. Um, when I purchased this house last year, I was told that it was in the historic area the that's on the national register i think all of covesville is but i'm not sure uh, it just seems like this is something that doesn't fit that character and might detract from it i'll probably defer to scott on that so, i mean as far as we know the parcel we have is a rural agricultural um area Yeah, I'll just I'll add that um, I'm trying to pull up a map now so I can show what uh, is in the area as far as uh, historic districts. And um, while I'm doing that, I'll just point out that while the historic districts are a factor that we take into account as part of uh, assessing the character of the area and the impacts of the use, there aren't actually any separate regulations that are specific to historic districts. And uh, give me just a moment here, I'll pull up that map, <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, uh, there we are. so if you all can see that, uh, Ms. Hines, you're talking about the uh, National Register uh, historic district parcels and uh, your parcel here 10821 is kind of the north end of that designated area and so the crown orchard property that we're talking about today is adjacent to that and we'll want to take any potential visual or character impacts of that new use on the adjacent district into account but again that's kind of something we would address through the conditions of a special use permit, perhaps through screening vegetation or limiting visibility of a proposed facility uh, versus there being any uh, additional rules on top of the RA zoning district regulations that are already in place. Um, next, 
Yeah. Kelly, go ahead and speak. Hi, uh, it's Kelly Hardy again. Um, I just wanted to clarify from my first question. Um, I think what would be helpful to me is to establish if there already have been people in this area. Um, and so would there really be a change in the number of people coming in? If you could just say whether there are or aren't and how many, if there are. I'm not familiar with what is already established. I just heard one of my neighbors talking about it. Thank you. Um, are you, I guess that this will not be uh, an influx of more people than have already been in the area. This is just a new, you know, a new facility for them to live in. And like I said, these are seasonal workers. Um, so, but, but th no, this is, this is not adding to what's already in the area. This is just relocating. Is there anybody else that would like to ask a question? Please raise your hand. I don't have anybody else right now, Scott. Alrighty, thank you, Carolyn. Um, Thank you, everyone, for uh, letting us know what your questions and concerns are. Again, my name is Scott Clark, and I'm at sclark at albemarle.org. If you think of a question later or if you want some clarifying information, um, I'll be happy to help you with anything that comes up. Uh, or if you want to know more about the scheduling of the hearings for this use, uh, I don't have any information on that yet because we're not that far along in the process, but I'll be happy to help you with that. Um, Mr. Ms. Giles, thank you for providing the information about your project and answering questions. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it looks like we have, uh, we have a hand up. Yeah, hold on. All right, caller with the last four digits, 3287. Please unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question. Yes, hello, this is Shireen Waterlowy and we have the cottage across the street at 5477 Coast School Home. And I'm calling because I'm a little concerned, obviously, with, with this uh, potentially being brought forth. I think it's going to greatly and adversely affect the area in our neighborhood. Um, I keep hearing that there will be many, or that it'll be seasonal. How many days a year are we talking? that this facility will be used to house the migrant workers. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, you know, each year is different. Um, so there'll probably be folks in this facility year round, but the numbers will go up and down depending on the, the season of the crop of harvest. Uh, um, so I can't really answer that right now with a firm number uh, because each year is different, but, you know, there'll be somebody in this facility year round and the, the, you know, with this, the summer and fall will be the busier time and the, and the spring and early summer would be less, um, I'm sorry, I can't give you a little better number, but um, Mother Nature kind of calls the shots when agriculture is in, involved and, and um, it would just depend on the year. Okay, and so, but basically you are saying that there will be occupancy every day of the year. It'll just vary in the number of people that'll be there. Is that correct? I think so. that's probably correct, yes. Okay, thank you. All righty, let's uh, have a little time left. So one last check, is there anybody who has any questions, please let us know and make sure you get a chance to ask. And just by uh, hitting uh, the raise hand button if you're on your computer. And Carolyn, was it star nine? Yes, that's correct. Star nine, if you're on your phone and you have a question. All 
All righty. Well, I'm not seeing any more hands raised. Oh, I do have one last question here. Go ahead, Kelly. Thanks. So I have um, a neighbor on the phone that couldn't um, be at the meeting, but I'm just going to read. Um, if the workers are being bused to work, why would it matter? Uh, it's the same distance from Batesville to where the Coesville. I think they're wondering why this couldn't be in Batesville. Um, well, the, um, you know, we want to use this piece of property for this, um, uh, for, for this project. Um, um, it's just closer to where the workers need to be. Um, and it's just, it's, it's got better access to the roads. Um, um, you know, this is where, this is where we want to do the project. Okay, Scott, I think you can. All right, I think we have uh, heard from all of our callers with questions. Again, thank you all for coming. Uh, feel free to contact me at sclark at albemarle.org if you have questions about this project or about the process. And uh, I think with that, we can go ahead and close this out and just say thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for listening. Yep. Thank you. Bye -bye.